Warm welcome to amazing new podcasts and YouTube channels, the channels with stories of resilience, triumph, and unwavering hope come to life. And in each episode, we dive into the inspiring journey of individuals who have faced the toughest challenges heads on and emerge victorious. Our aim is to be a beacon of inspiration, offering a guiding light to those navigating through difficult times. And whether you today, you are facing a professional setbacks, a personal struggle, or you are navigating through challenging times, this channel is dedicated to uplifting your spirit and showing you that even in the darkest moments, there is a path to hope and triumph. So join us everyone as we share powerful stories that transcend adversity, reminding you that resilience is a force within us all. So let's get prepared and f- to find that strength to navigate life challenges. My name is Dr. Rani Thanakodi. I am a clinical hypnotherapist, Mars Venus life and relationship coach, astrologer, tarot reader, breathwork coach, past life regression practitioner, chakra practitioner, and star magic facilitator. And today, I am really excited and have the great pleasure to introduce you to a very special lady all the way from the United States. Her name is Karen Deloche. Karen is an artist, art mentor, actor, creativity specialist as well. And Karen teaches art in college using textbook that she has written. So very warm welcome, Karen, to Amazing You. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. I appreciate what this podcast is all about. And thank you for the work that you do. Thank you so much, Karen. It's it's an honor after the class you delivered that everybody enjoyed. I am really excited to have you so that they know, everybody knows more about the wonderful work, the powerful work that you are doing and the lives that you are changing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. You can ask me anything you want. <laughs> okay. As we could read in your bio, you do so many things. You are artist, actor, mentor, creativity specialist. So can you share with the audience today about your journey into this different creative path and how did did it all this begin for you? Thank you. Such a great question. Yeah, I'm I'm the daughter of an Irish storyteller. My father was a comedian. He was on vaudeville. Uh, his career was a Marine, but he really was a highly creative storyteller. And he instilled in me, his firstborn, that love of telling stories. And as a kindergartner, as a, l- a little child, I was directing plays in the playground and loved it, and, you know, creating, bringing stories to life. And I didn't ever expect to be an author, but that happened later in life. Um, I was very drawn to acting and theater and uh, put on plays in the backyard as a child. Uh, And then I got interested in art in in middle school and high school and had a very good drawing teacher. And since it was a challenge, I decided to go to a Uh, as a college where I could take both theater and art and was thriving in that until I started taking painting classes, which was my going to be my major. Turns out my painting teachers hated my paintings, used four letter words to describe my paintings. I went to four different courses to try to get a different opinion, but they totally discouraged me. I found out later what was going on, but I I believed them. They were the experts. So I switched to sculpture and ceramics for graduate school. 
but I never lost that dream and desire to paint, to paint. When I married and started having beautiful little babies, I wanted to paint them. I loved doing portraits. I loved doing landscapes. And I would try so hard and just let these canvases go halfway until I was stuck. And I couldn't get them to, to be as good as I wanted them to be. And every time there was this left brain bully saying, see, you're just proving those teachers right. You can't do it. You're terrible. You're not a painter. Just give it up. So I did over and over and over again. Until I got a mentor who had been to the Chicago Art Institute back in the day when they taught the fundamentals, skills of drawing and painting. Well, this gentleman took me on as a, as a client and I learned how to paint from him, actually develop the skills I needed to become a better painter. It, it was life changing getting that mentor, life changing. And, and ultimately, because I love teaching, it changed, made me a better painter, but it also changed me and made me a better teacher. I create, because of what I went through, a safe space. This is a no criticism zone, whether it was my studio, a classroom, a college room, wherever it was, and now on Zoom, on, on the internet, this is not a critical place to, you know, encourage. Um, the right, the left brain that we develop so strongly in our schooling that gives us logic and order and timeliness and memorization, and when we get tested for it and usually have jobs regarding our, our beautiful brilliant left brains, but we ignore, trivialize, and even get wounded in our right brain. Now, I'm simplifying. I'm not a scientist. I know our brains are more complicated than that, but we have all been giving a region in our brain devoted to creativity. So I ask you, just like for me, when I was a small child, loving to do acting and storytelling coloring. Matter of fact, I love coloring so much. I ended up coloring on the walls, much to my mother's chagrin, <laughs> because I like to work big. I ended up doing murals, which is very large and getting paid to paint on people's walls. <laughs> but, you know, when you're five and six, you don't know that's going to happen. My mom certainly didn't, but we joke about it now. So I ask you, you know, and your, and your listeners, what did you love when you were five and six? Because it's a clue of how you can touch and develop and tap into your creativity of your beautiful right brain. <laughs> oh, Karen, thank you so much. It's it's always a pleasure to listen to you, to, li to listen again to your story. And uh, we have s something in common because I was like you too. As I love drawing and painting at school and in secondary school, it happened to me that my teacher, she had her favorites and didn't want to waste time to show me, you know. I wasn't that bad. I, w I know I was good. I used to draw a lot of uh, fruits. I used to like these steel objects. And she didn't give me much attention and and the report she gave me at the end of the year, she gave me a 47. And I wanted to get a 50 to continue to take that further. And that discouraged me. She would always give me not very encouraging marks and really come and see what I was doing, only focusing on the best, on the those that are the best in the class. And I always noticed that. And, uh, and that was... I was really sad to see that. And I gave up, like you. I know. I gave it's up painting. Sad. Yeah. You know, and I know so many of our listeners, your listeners, I'm sure have had similar experiences. If it wasn't about your coloring or your drawing or your painting, maybe it was about your singing mm -hmm. or your dancing or writing. And these are all incredible creative gifts that are probably still percolating in you because our right brains are sensitive. They're tied in with the five senses and they, and they, they take things hard and, and they're intuitive. It's our right brain is imaginative and inventive. And when it's been crushed or wounded, it shuts down. And so all of us maybe have those wounded places. And I'm just saying you can be healed and you can push past that and get the victory. Because when you do creative acts, 
You release serotonin, the happiness chemical. We all need more happiness and fun in our lives. And these things are fun, especially if you're bent that way. One of my sons, everything was a drum. The tabletops, his desks, his books, the pots and pans, everything. Well, of course, he ended up a musician oh. and a drummer <laughs> because that was his bent. That was what just he heard those beats all his life. And actually, two of my sons are, are, are drummers. Um, and the third one is, is a, a singer songwriter. So they're all musically creative. But for me, again, with singing, People would turn the radio on if I started singing. And I love to sing. I want to share with you, when I started seeing the miraculous healing power of the arts in, in my students' lives and in my life, my family's life, I started investigating to see what the scientists had to say. And here's a study for you. I bet your listeners would love to hear this one. Yes. Do you love to sing in the shower or maybe in the car when you're oh, alone? Yeah, we all do sing. Yes. <laughs> Well, it turns out when you're singing in the shower, you're letting your left brain rest, even though you're using it to scrub a dub dub and you're, you're not thinking about it. You're, you've done it before. You're singing along. You're enjoying the shower. You get out. You feel good. You're drying off and you've released serotonin, that happiness thing. You're feeling warm and cuddly and fuzzy. And an idea comes to you. Because now you've been making neural connections between your left brain and your right brain. We want to use them both. That's the goal. And a new idea, a new way of looking at things. There's there's like a, a shift in your perspective and a problem maybe that from work or a, a relationship or even something creative that you're working on. An idea comes to you because these new neural connections you've been creating while singing in the shower are actually creating more brilliance in your brain, helping you overcome brain fog, brain fatigue, depression, oppression, uh, any of these discouraging things get a lift through engaging in any and all kinds of creative activities, including singing in the shower. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think I think it's... It's amazing how creativity, how we can revive our creativity, you know, like you and I, we put it aside for some time. And after 26 years, I went back to my creative side and I'm going to go painting after talking to you today. So, and that <laughs> gives me so much joy. I remember when I was a little girl, because you asked at the beginning, what is it that you like to do when you were a little <laughs> girl, you know, like every little child. I used to love painting, drawing, and I asked my dad to make, you know, when we, that time, 20, 20, 25 years ago, there was no whiteboard. I asked my dad to make me a small blackboard and I would use the chalk and I would, and so he would make that for me and I would spend hours by myself on the veranda to do my drawing, my writing. So this was something that I loved and I'm so glad I'm, I'm back to it, you know, and you gave us that again in the class that you delivered, you brought that up for many other ladies who mentioned it. They say after talking, after attending your class, now they want to go back to their creative side. Yeah. So the creative side is so important. And tell us more about why creativity is so important in our lives, Karen. Yeah, as I had some stories, and I'll tell some more stories of some Please. of my students, but, you know, just to say my program is called Art as Self-Therapy, Wellness Through Creativity, because this is an essential part of who we are. If the creator gave us half a brain devoted to creativity, then we all are creatives. And even Albert Einstein said, creativity is intelligence, having fun. So if you're not having fun, if you're not engaging in any of these activities, and I do have a, a free pop-up podcast that you, your listeners can can find at www.garendelogeart.com, and they can register and get more ideas, a lot more ideas on how they can be creative if they don't feel like drawing or painting is theirs. Um, but, you know, I set out on this quest these last 10 years to, to learn more about the healing power of art through seeing it work for many of my students. I, I was a homeschool mom for 30 years and the, the art teacher for lots of children. When we started, it was small and I worked out of my studio and, and a mom brought her son to me and he had so much 
difficulty with academics because he was ADHD and dyslexic. And as a result, he was failing. He was depressed. He wanted to give up and he was still young. And his mom, who had been working so hard to to help him, was discouraged. So in the studio, he came. Well, he took to painting and drawing and sculpture like a duck to water. He did great. I was entering my students' work in a huge youth art competition, winning ribbons and awards. Well, this changed him. This caused him to gain confidence that he wasn't stupid, that that he could overcome these you know mental and emotional difficulties that he was going through, and he was willing to really settle down, let his mama help him. And sure enough, he graduated from high school, which was not on his radar to ever be able to accomplish. So we were all really rejoicing in that. As a matter of fact, he the one last time was in a youth art competition and he won not just first place, but best in the entire show with a beautiful batik he did of the universes. It was gorgeous. Then unfortunately, a couple of months later, he got a brain infection that caused a stroke and he became paralyzed on the right side of his body, 18 years old. They despaired of him even surviving. He was in a coma. They had to take off his skull. It was so infected and give him a plastic skull. Four months of rehabilitation and therapy, he finally got to go home with a walker dragging the right side of his body and he couldn't even talk or communicate very depressed. Trying, They were still doing therapy to keep his right hand from curling up. So his mom brought him right back to my studio. <laughs> I said, well, okay, you know, your left hand works. Let's try that, you know? And I, I didn't understand then about all these neural connections that we make when we do creative acts. We're actually contributing to our own brain plasticity, which enables the brain to work in different ways. Well, he he just started learning to draw left-handed so quickly. It, it amazed all of us. He could start drawing, painting, and communicating and writing. Next thing I know, I get a call from his neurosurgeon. Now, this guy says, you know, I've never called anybody's art teacher before. <laughs> he said, what are you doing with David? Not only is he stronger with his weak hand than I am, and I'm a surgeon. But he's getting healing on the right side of his body. It's like, what? I said, I don't know. I'm not even an art therapist. I'm just an art teacher. He said, don't stop. Keep doing it. <laughs> well, sure enough, before long, not only was he using his left hand to write and draw, he was starting to be able to talk and walk. And if you look at that young man now, you would never know that he had gone through these terrible, terrible adversities. And and he got his sense of humor back. No longer depression. He's got a very dry, funny sense of humor. And to see him as a handsome young man, it's just miraculous. And obviously, art played a big part. He believes, his family believes, and his neurosurgeon believes. They even have a, a branch of neurosurgery called NeuroArts. Because they don't know why it works. They just know that engaging in creative activities brings healing. In this case, physically, but also emotionally, mentally. It reduced, reduces stress. You know, that cortisol, we need that cortisol, but we don't need it building up, causing us anxiety and 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 sleeplessness and fretting and, and engaging in 15, 20 minutes a day of, of a fun Creative activity reduced, reduces that stress level and increases the serotonin happiness level. It's it's just wired into us to bring get healing through it. So I encourage all your listeners, what did you love, you know, like we talked about when you were little, but what maybe if you laid down, you know, because of other, you know, making a living, raising a family, and maybe you take out a little bit of time. And if you have children, they love to do it too, do it with them. I know even my 92-year-old mother was coloring with her great-granddaughters recently. She said, Karen, I can't believe it. 
I thought coloring was just for children, but I am really enjoying this. I'm not anxious for anything. I feel that just, just really, really everything I was describing was working for her too. <laughs> so I didn't like those adult coloring books with the little tiny things. She said, that was too hard. This is easy and it's fun. And she, she, she could do it well. So, you know, it's, you're not too, you're not too old. It's not too late. And we're all creatives. <laughs> Thank you so much, Karen. That is so powerful to share with us the, that uh, that transformation of that client of yours through the power of healing arts. Thank you so much. Yeah, and twice in his life, you know, when he was young and then when he was an yeah. upper teen, you know, to go through infirmity like that. And most of us don't have that severe thing yeah. to go through. But I had another adult adult art student of mine who yes. was wonderful at sculpture who then came to me and said Karen I've been diagnosed with late stage breast cancer and given six months to live we were devastated but I knew how talented she was I said Jan why don't you help me with this show? I have a big room installation going to happen in nine months. You can help me. Come to the studio. Let's work together. Distract you from that awful, all the awful things you're having to go through. And she said, well, I don't even know if I'm going to be here in nine months. So, well, you'll leave a legacy for your family. Come do it. Well, she did. And we had a blast. When she wasn't going through you know, radiation and chemo and surgeries. She was in the studio. We laughed. We were problem solving, making cupcakes, cookies, candies, wow. all kinds of things. It was called Taste and See Sweet Shop. It was a whole room to look like a candy shop and everything was made out of porcelain. We got chairs out of the Goodwill and refinished them. Or I refinished them. It was, she was a little, getting a little weak there for a while. Um, and But people came in thinking they were going to buy chocolates. So, well, they're for sale, but don't eat them you're gonna break your teeth <laughs> right out of porcelain and sure enough jan was there she worked it she was there almost all the 17 days that that show and we had it another year later and she went into remission and is now cancer free completely wow thank you thank you for sharing that i think i really <laughs> believe that the audience need to get back to their creative sides and you know, because like you said, we are creative by nature. And what do you think, Karen, blocks people from tapping into their creative potential as they get older? I think part of it is what we've already discussed, that left brain bully, I call it, that tells them they can't. Oh, you can only do stick figures or you you can't knit or you can't draw. You you can't sing. These these are these are, are bombarding our very sensitive right brain that wants to be developed and explored and make new neural connections or maybe we're just having depression or maybe brain fog that we're fighting that we're that we're struggling with and it's hard to get the energy or some people might say i don't have the time but as we've already discussed sing in the shower sing in the car you know incorporate into your life on purpose creative actions that will actually make you well and have better well-being in in healthiness in your life so <laughs> it, it works do absolutely. it <laughs> absolutely you know while you were talking i was also thinking some other reasons that block people from tapping into their creative side, it's a lot to do with culture. Like I come from a culture that you have to achieve, you have to go to university, you have to have specific profession, accountant, lawyer. And then if ever you have a creative side, the people around you, they push that down. They say, no, you can't get a job with that, you know? So it's a lot to do with culture, with the society, with how education is in many countries, encouraging only academic stuff. But creative side is so important. And you talk about how creativity has something deeply connected to our humanity. Absolutely. So can you share with us more about why you believe creativity is so essential in today's AI-driven world, Karen. 
That is such a good question because, you know, chat GTP, why should I become a writer? I can just get get it from chat GPT or yeah. uh, why should I be an artist? I can get it from Picasso. So these websites um, and they and they do have perfect writing, perfect pictures, but they're missing the element of humanity that intuitive place where it speaks to our soul speaks deeply to us and it, you know, no ai can do that it's completely left brain and when we tap into our right brain we're tapping into our own personal brilliance and identity at a deeper level yes even in our culture in america the, the arts tend to be trivialized if nothing else music art drama, theater. These things are not not focused on. And, and if a pro and if a school is struggling financially, they're going to cut those programs first because we have such an emphasis on the left brain skills, which are wonderful. We don't want to deny yeah. them. Yes. But I, I think we do a disservice to our children. I mean, scientists say that 98% of five and six-year-olds are creative geniuses but only 2% of adults. So that potential that we had at five and six is still in us, is still there. I went back to school to, for filmmaking at 53 and, and went there for four years to be able to come become a, an independent filmmaker. And it's it's something I get to do with, with a group of Ugandan youths who were rescued from the streets and this church took them in. And I get to teach them week by week how to do, tell their stories because they have incredible stories to tell. You know, the world doesn't want to hear it, but the world needs to hear it. And I'm helping them find a way to tell their stories. And it's just it's just exploding with with incredible beauty and joy in their lives and in the impact they'll have through their movies. Working on our third one now. We need a camera. So we have to do a fundraising thing for a new camera. <laughs> but yeah, there's so many ways. Gardening, cooking, strolling. It's easy to incorporate, but it's purposeful. We have to choose it and not think of it as trivial or unimportant to have fun, <laughs> to enjoy our lives. Yeah, I had a, a, a lady tell me he, she was a poli sci major in college and very driven, as you were describing, and had done all of her coursework, just needed some electives. So her last semester, she said she wasted her parents' money by taking art and painting and sculpture. I was like, <laughs> That shows the pervasive attitude that we're, well, I'm trying to struggle against and say, those are so important. Mm. Did you have fun? Yes. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Was it really, truly a waste of money? I, I You know, it breaks my heart. And that's something that I think we can all evaluate in our own hearts. Have we trivialized? Maybe, you know, your grandmother taught you how to knit and you laid it down, but you remember you can, you can take it back up. My grandmother um, didn't have much to give, but she made us these little knitted booties out of all these wild colors. And I'm telling you, after she lived 96 years, those booties are worth their weight in gold. Everyone like, do you still have booties? Do you still have booties? You know, we sew up the, the holes again because she's not here but her booties left a legacy sounds silly but it's not it matters it really does my father picked up painting and I got to teach him later in his life and as he gave my sister and I framed paintings he did they were on proudly on our walls we wouldn't trade them for anything in the world so I say pick it back up you know you know in your heart what you love and what you'd like to do again so I say do it and, and here's Dr. Randy saying, do it. <laughs> She's doing it. <laughs> yes, I am doing it and I am enjoying it. It's, it's really exciting for me to do that, to do my creative side, my creative arts. And it's, it's something I look forward every month. Yes. And I will definitely ask my mom to help my dad to get back to his creative side. Even if he is in a wheelchair, you know, he can still even draw something, you know, even if he can't see, that's okay, you know? Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, I will, I will, I will tomorrow talk to my mom about that. And yeah, <laughs> I believe that creativity is inborn. It's, it's the gifts that God has given us. It's gifts. Right. 
treasures inside of us. Yeah. Yes, treasures. I, I'm working with a 77 year old man who <sighs> loves art. He was a he was an engineer, but he picked up art. But then he was diagnosed with Parkinson's, and his right hand was shaking. And you know, he heard my story about David, and so he's you know he's like, teach me to draw and paint left handed, and I am. Mm-hmm. And he's lifted out of depression. <sighs> he started doing his art again. He's just renewed for a second session. I mean, a second a second. Um, this round of classes with me and determined to not give it up again. So ah, that's good news. <laughs> that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful because my dad has similar issue and I will encourage him and support him in that. Yeah. Karen, what, tell me, what do you find most rewarding about teaching art and creativity? You've got your studio, you do so many great things, you teach. So, especially in this era where technology seems to be dominating. Well, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, since since uh, 2020, we've all gone online and it was brand new world for me. I, I'm 70 years old. I love um, connecting with people. And so Zoom has become a way to connect with people all over the world, literally, just as we are right now. And it was a steep learning curve because I didn't grow up with technology. My, my generation didn't even have computers or anything like this. I love it. I, I I want to learn as much as I can. I love chat GPT. It gives me ideas for chapters or, or courses, titles. And, you know, I, th- I think the technology isn't a, isn't something we should fear. It's, it's, it's something we should embrace and find out how it can make our lives better. Don't be afraid of it. Um, and as long as you are engaging your full potential as a human, engaging your right, left brain, then you're never going to have to worry about being replaced by a computer or by a, AI. It, it just you, you can't be replaced um just as you know david with his having done art when he got a stroke those connections helped his brain they call it you know um plasticity brain plasticity where one part of the brain when it was damaged had another part of the brain come in and help it and th- this is what you do when you are engaging in in this part of your utilizing this part of your brain um and connecting with your with your left brain so it's good for you mentally emotionally physically and spiritually and there's no reason not to and there's plenty of opportunities with the internet to find mentors to find courses i love teaching people uh, alone or in groups um i i asked god one time what is what is my superpower and just clear as a bell i felt in my heart he said stirring up the creative in others so I'm on a mission. This is part of what totally, yes, I get joy out of doing my own. I'm working on some watercolors, working on some pottery. I always keep my hand in my art because I can't just preach it. I got I can't just teach it. I got to do it, which I love too. Um, but it it's, it's, keeps us alive and young. And we always have a voice when we express ourselves to our truest, in our truest places. Um, I'm working on my fourth book. You know, art as self therapy, wellness through creativity. I'm. This is a new book, uh, and it, it's in all of you. Whether it's writing, poetry, um, dancing, singing, it, it's available, and you're still young, and you can do it. It's not too late. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. You are such a role model because <laughs> you you are writing your your new book is coming, and you are still getting to your creative side, using that, helping being on a mission to help so many people. I think that's beautiful and that's powerful as well. And I would like to ask you, Karen, um, among all those books that you've encountered in your life, can you share with us a few books that have profoundly influenced you and briefly tell us why? I'm a big reader. I love to read. Um, Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt, who told part of his autobiography of growing up in deep poverty in Ireland since my father was an immigrant's family from Ireland. Uh, I, I felt like I learned a lot about my father and even the struggles with alcoholism with his father and brother. You know, my father struggled with alcoholism. So that that book really touched me. I, I think I cried for the whole thing. And yet he tells this terrible, rough story with humor. And 
it, it's a true gift. If you if you have an opportunity to read the book, Frank McCourt, Angela's Ashes, I think it's a Pulitzer Prize winner. The the movie the movie doesn't I couldn't watch the movie. I said, no, they won't have the humor that he writes with, the dry humor that it takes to survive. I kept reading the back of the book. Okay, he makes it, he lives through this, he becomes professor, he becomes educated because it seems there was so much against him. So Angela's Ashes, I think, is a very powerful book. Um, I, I, I read lots of how-to books. I, I read, I read, I read the Bible every day. Um, it's, it, it, Holy Spirit speaks to me every day through, through the Bible. Um, and, uh, I'll read, I read every, I read, I read probably three novels a week. I just voracious reader. We don't watch TV, but we do read a lot. <laughs> so there's two examples right there. Thank you so much. Thank you. And for individuals today who are listening and who are watching us, what advice or steps would you offer to them to navigate these challenging times and eventually overcome adversity? Karen? One one thing that I know that it takes, you know, when I call this a no criticism zone, I think that what you need your your listeners, all of you, to really give yourself the grace to learn something new, the grace to get through the process. We all want to be excellent, right? We don't want to be paralyzed by perfectionism, but we want to be excellent. And so things that are new are going to have a a learning process, right? We're called practicing artists because we're always practicing, right? Trying to get better. So give yourself the grace to get through and enjoy the learning, growing process. You know, as you are being an example, taking these painting classes, learning how to get better and learning the skills, developing the skills, then, you know, you're giving yourself the grace to learn and enjoy the process. It's not the product. It's what it's doing for you in your heart and mind that is the most important. Thank you so much for sharing that, Karen. And uh, can you share with us, beside the book that you are writing, you are publishing soon, what other projects or initiatives are you currently working on and how can people stay updated or get in touch with you? Yeah, I mentioned already um, www.karendeloach.com dot com. Uh, they can register for that free pop-up podcast I was talking about. Um, I'd love to talk to you, make an appointment with me. Let's talk about your creative journey. That's a free call. It's a free podcast. Um, I do work with people individually and I do create groups and um, I'll be starting a, a subscription group that'll be very cheap every month that people can join to get live classes and recorded classes from me. Uh, probably starting in the next couple of weeks I'm trying to think <laughs> yeah wow let's how exciting it. let's do, it. Let's do yes. it yes how exciting is that because i'm i'm sure a lot of people would a lot of people would like to get back to the creative and we saw that in the session that we had and i'm very grateful to have met you through through a beautiful lady called vinny so i would like to say Vicky, I would like to say a big thank you to Vicky for introducing us to each other. And uh, I wish you, Karen, a lot of success. It's just the beginning of our journey. We'll meet again very soon. And thank you so much for your precious time today, for sharing your wisdom. And I would like to say a big thank you to the audience for watching, for sharing, for subscribing. And remember that you are amazing now and forever. You will always be amazing. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.